Okay, hopefully you're learning that I am not a perfect programmer, but I also think there's a lot of value in showing you my developing techniques. I kind of hash these things, let the test drive the code, um, let the test show me where I'm wrong. The test could be wrong, the code could be wrong. It doesn't matter, I'm having double checks, and obviously we're finding, we found, in the last video, we found errors in my tests, and so I'm sure the test will further evolve as we go along with our profiler. Anyway. I've said this in previous videos, but I'll say it again. All too often I have programmers come to me and say, hey, this is broken. I don't know what to do. Well, what have you tried? Well, oh, I don't know what to do. It's busted. It's not doing what... Well, what have you tried? Oh, I don't know what to do. And Oh, it's so frustrating. It's like, do something. Tweak something. Toy with something. All too often in, in engineering, programming, pretty much kind of any skill engineering-wise, they'll say, well, excellent debugging skills. The ability to tweak your code and try different things and figure out what's going on and what's wrong. and That's a huge skill to have when you go apply for jobs is to be able to debug. So I think there's value in showing you how I'm debugging my own code here. Control F5. Let's see what we got wrong still. I'm going to scroll to the top here. And obviously sample profiles is the test we're working on. It still fails. And it said error value of category 3. I expected get next token input. So Here's something to notice. Because of the way I wrote the tests, it's showing me the call to get next token instead of the return value. And that's because of the way macros work. Um, macros uh, basically stringizes the string that I pass in. It turns this into a string and then it is able to print it out here. And it's saying, hey, the value I got was category 30 instead of 3. All right, now look at, let's look at this next fail. Value of i, it was 0, but or expecting zero but got one so uh, anyway let's let's see if we can solve what's going on here I'm, I'm going to first of all I want to look at the uh, file that we're generating again just see how we're doing with that I'm going to open that back up like so and it looks like we have category one category two category three and then zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven which is closer to what we're trying to achieve let me bring that back up right here. So we have 0, 1, 2, but it looks like we stopped a row early. And then, um, well, that's kind of interesting. You know, I'm going to, let's run this again. I'm going to close this because I get tired of that message box popping up every time I write to the file. But um, it looks like it didn't like category 3 because the actual value was category 3, 0. Notice category 1 and category 2, they passed. So I'm wondering, why did we get category 3? Zero. That should let's let's follow the code in the get next token. I'm gonna to put a breakpoint here. Hit a five. The first thing I expect is category one, and I expect that to work because that test passed. So ret has category one in it, which is correct. Uh, notice nothing's failed quite yet. I'm gonna hit a five again. I should see category two. All right, good. And then I hit a five again. I should see category three, but I get category three zero. So for some reason. Uh, it grabbed the 3 and the 0. It didn't stop it. Oh. <laughs> <It did. laughs> oh, I know what's going on. Oh, let me see if I can illustrate it, though. Let me, um, I'm going to shift F5, stop the debugging session, put a breakpoint here, hit F5 again, start it back up. So, uh, ret, so this will be category 1. I hit F5 again. Now this will be the category 2. Now this will be the category 3 run, so let's just roll through this. F10, C is uh, uppercase C, I'm going to put C down here. So now we can watch at the same time, ret, ret will grow to the word category, and then C will go through the letters of the word category. So let me just put a breakpoint here now, get rid of that breakpoint. And F5, you can see we, C, A, T, E, G, O, R, Y, all right, so ret plus equals C here. I'm going to hit F10. Notice ret goes to category. Uh, I want to get the 3, so F5. There's our 3. All right, now the next token we read should be the new line. Okay, there's a new line hanging out here at the end. We wrote the new line out. And if I hit F10, I'm going to read in to C, and notice we get the 0. We, we went over the new line. Well, what's the problem? <laughs> um... What we're doing here is textual. I haven't talked too much about it, but with the built-in file streams, we're reading this stream as a text file. That's why I'm using the stream extraction operator, as this is called, uh, when used with streams. It's anyway. So this this reads one character at a time, 
when we use this operator and it skips white space. Now I don't want to go into all the details how to turn on and off flags with streams but we basically need to tell the uh, stream to not skip the white space because the white space is uh, kind of important here. Um, notice we were able to grab the commas because commas are not considered white space but new lines, spaces, those kind of things are considered white space and we don't want the stream to skip that so I'm actually going to shift F5 out of this and the way we do that is the file, it's kind of the syntax, I don't know if it really makes sense but uh, is it no skip white, skip white space yeah, this is how we tell it to skip white space. There's a way to tell it to not skip white space. Let me pause the video, go look it up. Okay, I'm not quite sure why they were consistent with this. When I want to skip white space, I go into iOS and say skip white space. When I don't want to skip white space, it's just in standard and say no skip white space, like so. I'm going to put my cursor here, hit F12, see if there's anything that kind of fit. I want to, I'm curious why they put that in STD and not in iOS. Uh, template, basic IO, yeah. No, no, whatever. Control Shift B, let's make sure this builds. Just, I'm curious, sorry I have to do this. iOS, oh, Control U, Control Shift B. Yeah, weird. All right, I don't remember my streams enough to know why that's in there. Let me, um, so I'm going to put my breakpoint right here. Let's F5 through this. This is category 1, so I'm going to F5 to category 2, F5 to category 3. Now I can F10, and I'll put a breakpoint down here, get rid of this one. Uh, F5, F5, you can see our category word growing again. And it looked like it stopped, actually. I hit a 5 there once too soon, but uh looks like we might have got the right value. And I noticed here we didn't get an error on that that time. So let me um, control F5. This is see how our tests work. Our test still fell, but we're getting better. Okay, we're getting better. Uh, my assumption is we failed on that last row. Remember, we didn't see this last row show up. So let me let me reopen the profile CSV file. Yes, this is starting to look good, but where's our last row? Remember, we were supposed to write out here uh, new line 12, 13, 14, just like what we had here. But for some reason, our profile tests Either our tests aren't doing it correctly, or the profiler's not doing it correctly. Let's see if we can figure out which one it is. I'm going to go to, I think the best part to do that is in the add, add entry again. I'm just going to put a breakpoint here. Actually, I'm going to hit Control-Shift-F9, clear all my breakpoints. I think it's funny that they ask you, do you want to delete all breakpoints? It's like, no, I just magically hit Control-Shift-F9, some complicated keystroke for fun. In older versions of Visual Studio, they didn't ask you, but now they do, so whatever. Uh, so I cleared out all my breakpoints I had before I'm putting this one back in. F5, uh, the row we're missing is 12, so I'm going to F5 through this. Let's put a watch on time. I'm going to drag time down to that. I'm going to highlight both of these, delete those. So there's 7, 8, 9. We know we're good up to 11, so here's 11. Now when I hit F5, I hope I get another one saying do a 12. If I get a 12, Think about, what, what does that tell you? Here's the debugging skill. If I get a 12, what does that tell you? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, hopefully, hopefully your debugging skill says, if we get a 12, that means the profiler failed to write out the last row um, of the profile samples. But if we don't, don't get a 12, then we know there's still a problem with our tests. But either way, I'm, I'm able to kind of troubleshoot and do some process of elimination here to pinpoint down where the problem is. And I honestly don't know where the problem is. I'm recording this live uh, right now, and let's find out. I'm going to hit a 5. I hope I get a 12. Look at that. I got my 12. There's my 13. There's my 14, and that's the end of it. So, oh, let me kill the profile CSV file so we don't get that message. Um, so the problem... I believe should be in the shutdown function. We're not writing down, or we're not writing all of the uh, frames. And I'm suspecting that's because frame index, uh, we're, we're, we're going up and we're not going far enough. All right, frame index, we're calling, yeah, I can think through this. Remember, we, we need to call new frame. Mm, this is going to be kind of interesting. 
at the beginning of every frame, we call new frame. And then we do some profiles, and then eventually we shut down. So, the, the, this brings up an interesting scenario that I think actually uh, warrants another video. So we'll solve that problem in the next video.